So we now come to what is likely to be the final video of the course in which I prove the classification theorem for dinking diagrams of compact semi-simple groups. So remember, uh, if I zoom back up, the possible dinking diagrams are as follows. There are the AN dinking diagrams, the BN dinking diagrams, CN and DN. There's E6, E7, E8, F4 and G2. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Um, so the idea of the proof is to use the fact that uh, alpha dot alpha is positive unless alpha equals zero. So where is this coming from? Remember in Lie theory this is coming from the fact that the killing form or its dual more accurately is positive definite um, unless alpha equals zero on uh, what I was calling H star R. So this was the dual space to I times the Lie algebra of a maximal torus sitting inside the complexified Lie algebra of the maximal torus. Remember that's where all of this root geometry is happening. Okay, but we're just talking about root systems so we can just think this is a fact about Euclidean geometry and dot product. So how am I going to use this elementary fact? Well, I'm going to write elements of Rn, or more accurately elements of H star R, um, in terms of the basis given by the simple roots. Remember what we proved in the last video is if I picked a hyperplane of irrational slope then the corresponding set of simple roots form a basis for Rn. There are n of them and they're linearly independent. So in other words we're going to write elements of Rn as vectors um, v equals v1 down to vn and what this means is it's sum of vi alpha i where the alpha i alpha 1 up to alpha n are the positive uh, the simple roots. And actually what I'm going to do is Rather than writing like this, I'm going to use alpha i hat, where alpha i hat is alpha i over the length of alpha i, so it's a unit vector pointing in that direction. Okay, so it's suitably prescaled. Right, so let's write out what the dot product of v with itself will be in terms of this basis. It's the sum of vi alpha i hat dotted with the sum of vj alpha j hat, which is just the double sum of vi vj alpha i hat dot alpha j hat. So this is happening over i and j. Now I can rewrite this as a matrix product. It's uh, the vector row vector v1 up to vn times some matrix Q times the column vector v1 down to vn, where Q is the matrix whose ijth entry is alpha hat i dot alpha hat j. Just expanding this out in index notation gives this formula. Okay. Um, well, let's think a bit more about this matrix Q. Its diagonal entries are just ones because the alphas, alpha hats are uh, unit vectors. The off diagonal entries are negative. That's because, or negative or zero. That's because simple roots have non-positive dot products with one another and that doesn't change if you rescale them. So let's see if we can understand what the ijth entry of qij uh, of q is. Um, it's uh, alpha i dot alpha j but then we have to rescale uh, to make it a unit vector so that's divided by square root alpha i dot alpha i times square root of alpha j dot alpha j. In other words, that's the square root of alpha i dot alpha j 
over alpha i dot alpha i times alpha i dot alpha j over alpha j dot alpha j. Blah. Okay, what's this? And remember here we're taking the negative square root because we know that qij is negative or zero. So what is this quantity here? Well, this guy is what I was calling n alpha i alpha j. And this one is what, what I was calling uh, n alpha j alpha i up to a factor of two. So I think actually this is overall, this is uh, a quarter of n alpha i alpha j n alpha j alpha i. So overall, this is minus a half times the square root of this n alpha i alpha j n alpha j alpha i where these n's are integers and in fact I proved something about precisely this quantity here uh, n alpha i alpha j n alpha j alpha i was equal to um, 4 cos squared phi where phi is the angle between alpha i and alpha j so this was uh, one of four possible things. This was either zero, one, two, or three. We proved this in an earlier video. So the off-diagonal entries of qij are either um, zero or minus a half, or uh, what's this gonna be? Where root two over two, so minus one over root two, or minus square root 3 over 2 and those are the only possibilities so what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe that this matrix makes sense for any Dinkin diagram whether it's on our list or not so let me get a new page so given a graph where you know each um, node is connected by uh, 0, 1, 2 or 3 edges, uh, we get a matrix Q, symmetric matrix, the diagonal entries are 1s and the off diagonal entry in position IJ is whatever I just said, so 0 minus a half minus 1 over root 2 or minus root 3 over 2 um, depending on the number of edges. So if this is 0 edges, this is if uh, 1 edge, this is if there's 2 edges and this is if there are 3 edges between um, vertices i and j. So you have to number your vertices somehow. So let me just do an example. Uh, let's take our favorite root system A2. Uh, this is going to give me a 2 by 2 matrix whose entries are 1 and 1 on the diagonal and off the, on the off diagonal well we've got one edge so they're going to be minus a half. Um, let's do another example. Let's do a triangle. This is not one of our allowed Dinkin diagrams, but we can write down what the matrix would be. It'll be a three by three matrix because there's three vertices with ones on the diagonal. And now there are three edges, one between every pair of vertices. So we're going to get minus a half on every off diagonal entry. So now the claim is that Q is positive definite. In other words, um, uh, V1 up to Vn, Q V1 down to Vn is positive unless uh, V is zero. If and only if the graph that we start with is on our list of 
allowed dinking diagrams. So I'm not going to prove this um, because it's not hard. You just need to do a lot of case analysis. I'll, I'll prove, for example, that this one is not positive definite, this triangle. And that means you can never have a triangle in your graph. Um, so how does it work for this triangle? Well, if I take one, 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 and then stick this matrix one minus a half, minus a half, minus a half, one, minus a half, minus a half, minus a half, one, and then one, 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 what I get is zero. So that's not positive definite. Usually what people do is multiply this matrix Q by two to get rid of a factor of two everywhere, get nice integer entries, or you know at least a bit more integer than we currently have. So usually people talk about uh, 2Q rather than Q. Um, so here's how you would go about proving this claim. First, you would say, if your graph contains a subgraph whose Dinkin diagram or rather sorry whose uh, whose matrix Q is uh, not positive definite then your graph is not positive definite either So that's an exercise. And then you just need to find a suitably large collection of graphs whose matrix is not positive definite. So we just said you know, the triangle works, a triangle graph on three vertices, but actually any cycle works. So, you know, with any number of edges. These all have the property that if, if I use the vector one, 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 enough ones, uh, that will have length zero with respect to the um, quadratic form defined by the, the matrix Q. So there can be no cycles in your graph. And if you look up at the list, whatever it is, way up here, these graphs are all trees. There are no cycles in any of them, and this is why. Let's see some more graphs that would be problematic for us. Well, let's think. Uh, this one turns out that also gives a non-positive definite uh, Q. Um, and similarly with any, any number of um, vertices in between, if I have two of these kind of things sticking off both ends, then this is no good. Uh, what else? This is another bad one. Uh, so you have one central uh, vertex and then uh, three legs coming off it and each leg is two more vertices. Um, that's bad, that turns out to be uh, not positive definite. So these guys have names. So this one is A2 tilde, because I've taken the A2 graph, added another vertex and connected it in some way. This one is called A4 tilde. This one here is uh, D5 tilde. Another one would be you know, D4 tilde, which would be this guy. So each of these guys is what you would get if you took one of our allowed dinking graphs and added an extra vertex in some way. This one over here, for example, is E6 tilde. Um, and you make a list of all the possible things that you're not allowed, uh, or a large list of possible things you're not allowed, and then you observe that any graph um, that's not on our list has to contain one of these subgraphs. So these are the only graphs that don't contain an AN tilde, a DN tilde, an EN tilde, an FN tilde, a G2 tilde, 
the BN tilde or the CN tilde. Okay, so one of the possible uh, in-depth projects, if you still haven't done one, is to complete the proof of this. It's actually a really nice piece of, uh, sort of combinatorics um, that I've only really sketched here. 